I just finished building some patio chairs for this fire pit, and I built them out of composite decking, so I never have to stain, paint, or take care of them ever again. And yeah, I was the only one who had anything to do with these chairs. Nobody else helped me at all, not one single person. Ah. Here's how we did it. Composite decking looks great and it's weatherproof, but it's so flexible that every single deck made out of this stuff relies on a solid structure of real wood underneath to hold it up. So using it to build chairs, that might be asking for trouble. Speaking of trouble, I see you to show up. <laughs> you need a hand? Yes. Here, put these on. What are these? The new clothes from Iron Mercantile. Are these mine too? Yes. I have never had boots before. <laughs> Go let's, get changed. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, where was I? Iron mercantile, wobbly composite decking, right. Maybe I'm crazy, but I really wanna build chairs out of this stuff. So I found a company that makes a few different sizes of composite decking boards textured like real wood in a gray color that's a perfect match for my patio. I bought six boards, enough for two chairs, and maybe a little chair for my son. Yeah, that pretty much cleared out my bank account. I mean, and the wood only cost us seven hundred dollars. <laughs> seven hundred bucks. I, when I first had this idea, it was going to be around four hundred dollars, and then prices went up, of course. And then they made me buy twenty foot lengths of. They the... made him. They said buy it or else. Let's just say I don't want to make any mistakes cutting these chair legs. The texture is only on one side of the board, so as I cut out each of these back legs, we made sure that two had texture on the left side and two had texture on the right. Dan, can we just do this at the shop? Yep, that's probably a good idea. Uh, can you help me carry some of this stuff? Nope, you got it. Even though I had a sketch of what I wanted, there was one thing I hadn't figured out, the actual angle of the back of the chair. And that's pretty important. So we decided to test out some angles and see what felt right. Should we just put it like Check on it a out. chair? Let's put it on the trash can. <laughs> we can't sit there. You can hop up there, Dan. Nope, nope. Let me grab the chair. Would that be even easier or too small of a space? What are you doing? Yeah, that's the one. That's exactly the one I was thinking of. Are you kidding me? This isn't how anyone sits. Why are you making it so awkward? <laughs> You like lean, you like you like lean your head back. No, I'm leaning back against the thing. That's not right. That's let not the see, right angle. Let me see. Oh, you know what we could do? I have some Adirondack chairs. We could go measure that angle too. Let's do it. But also, these are like Adirondack inspired. All right. So this is a little maybe hard to figure because it's curved. But it's right around 70 or 72. I don't know that this kind of chair is the right chair to base off of completely. I know it's Adirondack inspired, but mine are gonna be higher up. They're gonna be more like, you know, able to interact with the fire pit and like roast marshmallows and stuff. When we get to setting the back, we'll adjust the angle if we have to. How about that? With that settled, we brought out Ryan's chop saw and started cutting the front chair legs. Luckily, these cuts are parallel at the top and bottom. So it's the same angle yes. on both sides? Yes, it's kind of nice. So after setting the chop saw to the correct angle, we could theoretically make the same cut five times and get four identical legs. Might be just a hair long. So what I'll do, it's like a 16th long. Push it over just a eensy weensy. Bada bing, baby. You wanna see how hard it is? Nope. So we got two for one chair. Texture on both sides. Texture on both sides. And same. Sweet. The next pieces are the side rails, which will join with the back legs. They provide the support for the seats. And despite no one being in the shop with him, Dan continues to narrate his own thoughts. Does it go to 40? It says it's on 40. Why don't I just cut it and find out? Hey, it helps me figure stuff out. Who are you talking to? Camera. Oh, hey, camera. <laughs> if this was a true Adirondack chair, this piece would probably be a single piece of wood cut in a slightly curved shape. Instead, we'll be attaching these side rail pieces to the back leg with pocket screws and glue. This will create a slightly higher seat height than a normal Adirondack chair and give it a more modern, beachy look. All right, 
Hey. Got that done? I like those pants and boots, dude. Thanks. You guys should totally go check out Iron Mercantile. They've got awesome clothes there. For hardworking men like you and me. Let's do Check out ironmercantile.com. Thanks, Ryan. They have Carhartt and Dickies and Yeti. Are you done? And Columbia. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Okay, what are we doing? Uh, we're doing the armrest, and those are coming off of the one by six boards. Oh, nice, I like this for the armrest. They're all gonna be- We need four of them, obviously. We need four of them, chairs. and they're gonna be two foot, one and three quarters inches each. So we need at least like 11 feet here. So 10, mm. and, a, 10 and a half. Eight, eight no, and a half. Eight and a half, yeah. I think we're good on that then. Two foot, one and three quarters. All right. Oh, crap. Somebody wasn't holding that board. Dented the corner. Well, that's the one we'll cut off. We now have four back legs, four front legs, four side rails, and four armrests. Plus, we also cut out some one by four pieces to support the seats from side to side. You're not butted up. And that pretty much does it for the base. So this thin stuff, which is actually fascia, is gonna be the slats for the seat of the chair. Slats for the back too. And it should be kind of nice and maybe a little bit like bendier than the rest. We'll see. So flexible. I know. Do we need to have a table over there to catch it? We kind of do, huh? I mean, I'll just be the table. I'm turning into a dwarf from a fantasy book. Gray skinned dwarf. It's like my my literal dream. Maybe not dwarf though. But just to be in a fantasy book. <laughs> All right, so all our cuts are done. I love doing projects like this where you just cut everything ahead of time and then it's just assembly. Especially when you're doing two at once, it's a lot faster. Hopefully everything's correct or... I mean, whatever it is, it is. We can make it, <laughs> we can make it work with this. I know we can. And next up, we've got to um, seal the edges and then assemble. This sealant cost about $13 and it's supposed to be good for 250 cut ends. I probably used half of the container, but I also had some longer edges to seal. Hey, Dan. Yeah. An armed man ran into a real estate agency and shouted, nobody move. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hopefully this does the trick and these boards never warp or swell due to moisture. All right. Is that it? You're done. Definitely not what they expected people to do with this stuff, but you know, I'm just gonna leave those there. That's a great idea. Because we're out of room on our hand. <laughs> <laughs> After letting the pieces dry overnight, we got to work assembling the chairs. Did you fix that for me too? Yes, I did. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I put a couple of pocket holes anywhere I had to join two edges together. And in case that's not enough. So we have this construction adhesive. We did. I wouldn't even call it research. We watched a video and it, wood glue didn't seem to hold. But this construction adhesive is awesome. It's literally made to bond like anything to anything. So I think it's gonna hold really well. At least we hope so. So what's the next step? Um, I think we need to put a break, like we need to connect them basically. Um, with a brace that goes on the front part. Are these cheap corner clamps from Amazon? Find out if they work or not. Yeah, you make sure all the edges are good. Yes, we can make sure all the edges are good on this next one. No, I, I made sure for good. the top side Sweet. it was all good. Sweet. Where's the other leg? Here, uh, we should just clamp them and then we could... Uh... That's a great idea, let's clamp them. All right. Is that good? It's pretty good. It's not the official way to make a chair, but I mean, it's gonna work for us. It's the bro way. After clamping the front legs and adding glue, I proved that broadcasting may not be in my future. It's crazy how that stands up with three legs. That's why three-legged, 
That's why. <laughs> that's 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 why three lady. <laughs> why can't I say three legged? That's why three legged dogs can walk. My gosh, Dan. I promise we weren't high on this glue. You should probably measure this. Nah. <laughs> the slats went on super easily and quickly, and finally, we can see the seat starting to take shape. The question is, how strong is this base? I think it's gonna hold me just fine. I think it's gonna flex too much. Ooh. Oh my goodness, I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, I'm sitting on it. Should I sit on it? You've been losing weight. What's, what's our weight difference right now? 30 pounds? 30 pounds, yeah. Let's see what 30 pounds makes. I feel like that's just a nice, comfortable uh, seat right there. I don't think it's gonna break. I don't know. Despite all our testing earlier, we still had to try out a few different angles for this backrest. We really wanna get this part right. Do you wanna just hold one up? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna do. <laughs> so this is essentially a 90. Am I on the back slat? Yeah. Uh, you're right, it, the 90 was too much. That's pretty good. I mean, it's just, a, I'd say like 100 degrees instead of 90. As I always say, when in doubt, test stuff out and then just screw it in wherever it looks right. Look, I eyeballed it and I think it's pretty dang good. You eyeballed it so hard. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, honestly, it I looks I am good. not mad at that. <laughs> okay, good. Keep it here. Okay. And then I'll just screw in the bottom screws. Whoa, you can't do that. We need to space these four out so that we have them I'm all. I'm not screwing that in. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of an overreaction, but I'm pretty invested in this chair by now, financially and emotionally. And we are so close to finishing it. It looks really good. Okay, let's move on to the back slats. And it's gonna be that tall, because I'm going right to the base of that strut. I like it. Okay. Let's do that a few more times. All right, it looks really good from the back and upside down. Let's see how it looks from the top. Oh, uh, heck yeah. It looks totally looks like a beach chair. I'm, I'm gonna sit in it. Don't put too much pressure on the back. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I think that's gonna be wonderful. But right now it's not gonna support me. A lot of the support will actually come from the armrests once they're attached to the legs. For all we need to do, we don't need to do this. We need to attach them together and then we yeah. fit on there. In order to support the back slats, we connected the two armrests with a single piece of decking at the very back. Then we drilled pocket holes on the outside of the front legs so we can firmly attach the armrest to the chair. So you didn't design a support for the back of the armrest, right? Right. What would be really simple is if we just do a support that goes from here up to that backrest. So that's what we did. When does a chair become a chair? When it's no longer, when it's a job. Wait, what? <laughs> It's basically finished. I think it's... That's perfect! Oh, that's fantastic! That back definitely needs to be... Uh, yeah, we'll brace it up. Brace it well, up. let's do that right now. And after attaching a thin strip of decking to the top of the slats and screwing through the back support into the slats, this chair should be pretty solid. You know what we need to do? Go put it by the fire pit. Yeah, let's build this other one and take them both out. This video is sponsored by Iron Mercantile. They've got awesome Sugar River flannels, Irish Setter boots, Columbia, Carhartt clothing, basically anything you need if you need good durable clothes that'll hold up to your hard working lifestyle. Honestly, I didn't expect these chairs to turn out as well as they did. They look fantastic. They're low, they're super comfortable to sit in, and they feel like a vacation in my own backyard. I learned some stuff along the way too. First, it's pronounced composite, not composite. I love these chairs, Dan. I know, they look so good. They do look really good. Almost professional. Almost. I mean, I'm gonna stake my 
bro reputation on it. <laughs> These are gonna last as long as the patio. Didn't you say you were gonna make a chair for your son out of all the extra scraps? Yeah, I did. Secondly, I learned that everything's cuter when it's tiny. <laughs> this is probably the cutest thing I've ever made. That thing's life. amazing. <laughs> Just a perfect scale model, and it actually fits him really well. Do you wanna see him in it? Yeah, right, for sure. I'll go get him. Here's the littlest bro on our crew. Come on, that's adorable. I don't care who you are. <laughs> yeah, it's solid, right? <laughs> I've got one too. And thirdly, I learned there's more to be done back here. The only thing I wanna fix about this yard is that eyesore back there. We need to build a rack for all that wood with a cover over it so I don't have to have an ugly tarp back in the corner of my yard. We can do that. Next project? Definitely. But for now, I'm just gonna roast some dogs and relax. Big thanks to Iron Mercantile for helping us out with this project, and I'll see you next time on Bro Builds.